Cougars fans are super interested about the offensive coordinator coming in, Shane Waldron. What can you tell them about who they just hired to, to uh, try to get this offense where it needs to go? Um, uh, oh. this, is, this is live? Yeah, <laughs> we're not live. We're not live. I'm playing. Um, <laughs> uh, good luck to y'all. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a great person, great offensive coordinator. I was very lucky to Oh, man, that's not what you want to hear. That's not what you want to hear if you're a Bears fan. Good luck to y'all. He's a great person. They're asking him. Bears podcast or some Bears organization is asking about what they can expect from their new offensive coordinator, Shane Walder, and he used to be a Seattle. They're asking a former Seattle player. But but Seattle player was like a rookie or a sophomore. He's not good enough to really talk shit, to be frank with you. But this is interesting to see a daily sports podcast, news narratives, takes and gambling. And tomorrow will be the Super Bowl gambling show. I never put any effort into the fun props, ever. Never. If you take more than 10 seconds on those, then you're a degenerate and you need to seek help. So just like your gut feeling, we'll go through them on Friday just because whatever. Uh, and game narratives, etc. But that uh, it's Radio Row. So all these players are walking around promoting a bunch of garbage uh, that nobody cares about. And then they do interviews and they're like, this is my story with Tide or Bounty or this is why I drink Gatorade. And you're like, okay. Who cares? Brock Purdy um, has had a fun thing. He looks very much like some girl named Anna Fry. I don't know who that is. I'm too old to know who that is. But then someone else pointed out he looks like someone else. Um, this is weird. They were like, you know who you look like, son, is Lee Harvey Oswald. I haven't. That's my first time hearing it. Yeah. What do you think about that comparison? Uh... Eh, yeah, yeah, I don't, eh. What a weird thing. A good, a good response might have been, um, no, actually, I'm not going to make a joke. I'm not going to make a joke about accuracy or doing it alone. Not going to do that. Other people probably have done that. I haven't even looked if they've done that, but I imagine that other people, not me, uh, have made jokes about accuracy and doing it alone. I don't know. It's just my gut feeling. We're going to take a look, uh, a deeper look into what's happening at Dartmouth College basketball. Like, why? It's Ivy League basketball. Also, they're horrendous. Horrendous at basketball because the National Labor Relations Board earlier this week ruled that the Dartmouth basketball players ought to be considered employees of the school and therefore they can proceed with the union. And that is insane. And if that is the case, then we are, if they're employees and it's not scholarship and they're salaried, then that's going to open up a can of worms that I don't think the country is comfortable with, specifically surrounding the biggest money suck in college sports, which is women's college basketball. So if people are employees, I don't know what that means. I don't know anything other than the NCAA's days are numbered. And then I don't know what this means for Title IX because Title IX, using state funds to provide the same opportunities for members of any sex is different than forcing a company to pay employees for not making any money. So, uncomfortable conversations are in route. Speaking of uncomfortable conversations, uh, multiple NFL owners, this is according to a rumor thing, but it's from Seth Wickersham. So this is a rumor account, JPA football, but that is from Seth Wickersham, allegedly. Uh, And here's a story from ESPN. Multiple owners have complained about how many picks, compensatory draft picks the Niners have gotten from developing minority coaches and GMs. So a couple years ago during the uh, George Floyd protests, one of the things that the NFL did to improve the racial diversity of its front offices and coaching staffs at the highest levels, not just the staff, but the head coaches and the GMs, was to incentivize teams for if you developed a minority person regardless of their ethnic background, a non-white person, and that person goes on to become a head coach or a GM, you will be rewarded a draft pick in the third or fifth round, I believe. I don't remember. I think it's third. The Niners have done it four times. Robert Salah, who is not white and is Muslim. Martin Mayhew, former GM of the Detroit Lions, who made one of the worst draft picks in the history of the National Football League. Mike McDaniel, head coach of the... Miami Dolphins, and Ron Carthon. Hello, and D'Amico, D'Amico Ryans, of course. And now uh, they're going to have more guys, we think, down the road. So Steve Wilkes, I believe, will be the next one from the Niners. Um, the owners have complained about the rule that they put in place to reward the Niners for being racially diverse. I don't know. 
it seems like uh, gaming the system to promote racial equality will work for a while. You get some more diversity, then you take it away, I guess. I don't know. They put it in place. I like it. It promotes diversity and it rewards it rewards diversity. Also, all these people, they overvalue third-round picks. Third-round picks blow. There are a couple of them. There. What about this guy? Amaro was a fourth-round pick. Like, Yeah, that is cool. Go look at the 2017 draft third round and be like, you know what? These guys are great. You know what I mean? Just go look at them. More rumors about Kyle Shanahan. Um, the relationship between alcohol and the NFL is interesting. There are a small outcry online or a small suspicion on the interwebs that Kyle Shanahan showed up to media day not sober. That when he was there, he was drunk. And then you're looking like, you know, Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Packers, was like, how did I get through the Aaron Rodgers drama? Wine. Mike McDaniel was an alcoholic to the point where he was about to get kicked off. So here it is, the Reddit, the Reddit thread from the 49ers official subreddit. Full drunk Kyle press conference at Super Bowl opening ceremony. He was wasted, I guess. I don't know. These are alleged. We don't know. No one's confirmed. No one gave him a breathalyzer. You know what I mean? But funny, nonetheless. Patrick Mahomes commented on being the villain. He knows he's going to be the villain. I love that. Charles Barkley is tired of LeBron complimenting himself by saying he could play football. And Charles Barkley's comments were, they'll kill you. <laughs> Which the Supreme Court is trending this morning. Love to see that. Why? Let's take a just quick peek. Is there something we need to know? Brazil Supreme Court. The so Hawaii Supreme Court. Standing in front of the Supreme Court. I said, no, no, no. So there's, there's a reason we just don't. We just don't know what the reason is, I suppose. That's fair. Rumors in the National Hockey League are that Arizona, the Coyotes, the Yotes, the Yotes, will be moving. And the rumors that are aggressively circulating now are that they are headed to Salt Lake City. It's No one is being like, it's a done deal, but it feels to me done. Arizona doesn't want them. Uh, Arizona as a sports town, I guess Phoenix as a sports town, is really strange. It's just too spread out. And because the majority of people there are of diverse geographic backgrounds, it's hard to develop a grassroots fan base. And I think it's taken a long... I think the Suns and the Cardinals have probably done the best job. The Diamondbacks are in baseball, which is tough because you know, if your owner doesn't want to spend a ton of money to be good, then you just aren't good and you just... Hope to get lucky uh, here and there over the years. And they have a couple of times in the last 20 years. Been They won a title 20-something years ago, and they were close this year. And that happens. But in hockey, without the they have a lot, large snowbird population, but those people are probably loyal to their teams, Chicago and Michigan and Ohio, right? So it's just not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen in Arizona. They don't want it. They don't want to pay the tax for it. Arizonans, are, they don't like taxes. They're not a big tax state, and so they don't want it. I think Salt Lake City desperately wants it. I think that you, the success of the Utah Jazz proves that while a, a sports league that's based on Sundays won't work in the Mormon capital of the world, a sports team that plays on many days of the week will probably do just fine. So they're going to bank on it. I think I think that where there's smoke, there's fire with this one. I think it's going to happen. That's just my gut feeling. Justin Jefferson uh, is going to be a free agent after the end of next year, talking about a big deal. Quote, I want to break the bank, and I want to be a part of an organization that wants me and to really give me what I deserve. He was going to want a historic deal, probably similar to what Calvin Johnson got, the record-breaking stuff for the Detroit Lions. I think he's probably worth it. I think he's probably worth. He's one of the best in the in the uh, in the league right now. He's telling Minnesota, like, no, there's not going to be any team friendly. This rebuild that, pay me my money. It would not be worth trading for though, because you can't give up your trade assets and your money for one guy, in my opinion, unless it's a quarterback. In which case, you can, and it still hurts. Ask Denver about it. Unless that quarterback is actually elite, like Los Angeles, I suppose. Back and better than ever on Friday for our Super Bowl preview. See you then.